21 Concurrent Activities That Ensure Continual Church Growth from Acts 2, 37 through 47. Despite persecution from hostile authorities, the Apostolic Church at Jerusalem enjoyed astonishing growth as the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. In early 2020, similar growth is occurring in about 1,000 movements across several nations, especially where other faiths dominate. Leaders and observers of those movements generally concur that the apostolic actions described in Acts 2, 37-47, largely explain their success. Wherever Christians find ways in which to implement these activities bathed in unceasing prayer, they begin and continue to grow even if they are not aiming to do so. Jesus had promised to his apostles, If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you. The following charts list out 21 apostolic activities from Acts chapter 2, each of which corresponds to a specific command that Jesus gave, along with comments from a church multiplication trainer coach who has experience in 20 countries in the Americas, Africa, and Asia. He recommends that you ask the Holy Spirit to guide you in finding culturally appropriate ways in which to obey the Lord Jesus Christ. These 21 activities may be presented in three sets of seven. A first set deals with evangelism, a second set with disciple-making, and the final set with life in the believing community. Seven Activities Dealing with Evangelism When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Whoever has ears, let them hear. Train and coach Christians in winsome ways to speak about the Lord Jesus within their cultural and religious contexts. Let the gospel flow primarily through existing family and friendship networks. Recount the gospel that Jesus and his apostles taught. 2. Peter replied, Repent. Repent and believe the good news. Conversion to Christ requires that one change their belief about him, his death and his resurrection, along with a desire to change their conduct in ways that the Holy Spirit makes clear to them. 3. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. By baptism... The Church affirms believers' repentance and faith, receiving them into the Church. Only delay baptism long enough to bring their family members to faith so that you can baptize them together. Most folk who are soon baptized will remain faithful to Christ. 4. For the forgiveness of your sins. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. Promise seekers that God will forgive everything they have done, said, and thought. Assure Christians often that God has forgiven all their past sins and forgives all new sins that they confess to Him. It is guilt or shame that drives folk away from Christ. 5. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. Teach believers who share the gospel to expect that the Holy Spirit will convince others that God has accepted them. Make the promised Holy Spirit a part of their gospel message. 6. With many other words he warned, Greek, witnessed to, them, and he pleaded with them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem. The authority of your message comes from Jesus and his apostles. We also bear witness of what Christ has done in us individually. 
train new believers to share their story and Jesus' story, for it is they who prove the most willing and convincing evangelists. 7. Those who accepted his message, Greek, word, were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. If they obeyed my teaching, Greek, word, they will obey yours also. Make it clear from the start that, upon baptism, one becomes a follower of Jesus, receives the Holy Spirit, and immediately becomes a member of your faith community. Welcome new believers without requiring a study course or a long testing period. 7 Activities Dealing with Disciple-Making 8. They devoted themselves. If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Arrange immediately for new believers to have group opportunities that fit their culture and educational level that are simple enough to become a regular practice. Make Bibles and easy materials available at affordable prices. 9. The Apostles' Teaching Teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. The Apostles' Teaching centered on the person, deeds, teaching and promises that they learned from Jesus, not on 17th century abstract theology. The first teaching for new believers concerns Jesus. First practices should be Jesus' basic commands. 10. And to fellowship. A new command I give you, love one another. Fellowship means sharing. New believers participate actively in meeting urgent needs, counsel, insights and lessons, as well as acts of love meeting urgent material needs. Allow even the poorest of believers to share the little that they have. 11. To the breaking of bread. He took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you, do this in remembrance of me. In new households and cells, no one is prepared to preach sermons, so make the Lord's table the center of worship. Take time for folk to repent of sins, to sense the Lord's presence, to weep, to express their gratitude. 12. And to pray. Until now you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive, and your joy will be complete. From the start, Churches and cells offer up prayers in behalf of all who come, teaching to pray to the Father, invoking Jesus' name with help of the Holy Spirit. They pray for miracles amongst the unsaved and for peace in their city. 13. Everyone was filled with awe. Tell them how much the Lord has done for you. And all the people were amazed. In non-Western cultures, folk are taken with displays of power, whereas in the West they track with logical arguments. Wherever evil spirits deceive folk with magic, expect the Lord Jesus to bind those spirits and to loosen folk from their grasp. 14. At the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Although you do not have apostolic authority, the Lord invites you to pray about desperate needs, and he will often perform miracles, especially among the unsaved. Learn to persevere in prayer together until you get God's answer. 7 Activities Dealing with Body Life 15. All the Believers You believe in God, believe also in me. Discuss Bible passages together. Preach the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Teach the great doctrines of the Christian faith. Exhort to trust God for timely help. 16. Were together and had everything in common. Where two or three gather in my name, there am I with them. Most non-Western cultures are already communal in practice, so do not introduce rugged individualism. Create opportunities and events for folk to come together to share their knowledge and skills. Set up a free repair service for those in need. 17. They sold property and possessions. 
sell your possessions and give to the poor. Undertake to support pioneer church planters and to donate to trustworthy charities. However, it remains against the law of God to sell your family home or farm. Wait on God to prosper members to give before incurring debt. 18. To give to anyone who had need. To give to anyone who had need. Give, and it will be given to you. In new churches, give first to meet urgent needs. Let new church leaders remain self-supporting. Never let outsiders donate to a church's budget. Let adult children support their elderly parents. 19. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes. Whatever house you enter, stay there until you leave that town. Count every home group, a little church within a big church. Let home groups celebrate the Lord's table, baptize new believers, and obey all the basic commands of Jesus. One task of congregational elders is to coach small group shepherds. 20. And ate together with glad and sincere hearts. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. Seek to foster emotional well-being as much as sound doctrine. Strengthen marriages, families, and ministry teams. Common meals remain a good way in which to foster fellowship. Hold up hospitality as an important Christian duty to be done gladly. 21. Praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. Experiment with culturally meaningful ways in which to worship. Invite believers to express praise to God. Welcome outsiders who want to learn.